Hey guys, it's Han, and today I have another unboxing and kind of let's chat about this RC kind of video. It's not really a first impression because I've had this truck many, many times. It's actually one of my favorite RC models of all time. And um, that truck is the Red Cat Volcano EPX. Now, some of you guys are, are kind of confused because on my channel, I mostly do Tamiya's uh, and my bread and butter is kind of Tamiya stuff. So some of you are kind of confused of why I, I really like this Red Cat. Um, but the Volcano is one of my favorite trucks. I kind of made a video about it when my channel first started, kind of long video, uh, when I had my old Volcano. Uh, it is one of my favorite cars for a multitude of reasons. I won't really get into that super in depth in this video because I did make a video, a long video before. Um, but this is the sixth of this platform I've ever owned and the fourth ever, four, fourth ever Volcano that I've ever owned. And the first ever brushless version of this platform I've ever owned. So kind of a mix of stuff, um, a mix of familiarity as well as some new fresh excitement. So uh, along with fresh excitement, they recently did update the brushless version of the Volcano with this new Volcano body, well as, as well as new wheels and you can see the Volcano logo there kind of to match up with their new Volcano 16 uh, the little version so really love the look of it and I thought uh, with the new refresh would be a good opportunity to kind of jump back into a Volcano because the one I had from before I no longer own unfortunately because I have to cycle through some cars uh, from time to time because I, I do have a lot and I still do want to show you guys like a variety of RC cars so I had to cycle through some stuff. Um, so it kind of got cycled out at, in, in one of those points. But um, it is cheap enough and readily available enough. I didn't really feel too bad about getting rid of it because I could always get another one. But anyway, uh, new update here, new box. Uh, I won't really go too in depth about the box because it's pretty pretty basic. I do like Red Cat's new, um, new uh, the clean format for their box. It looks very nice. Uh, you can also get it in a copper version if you like that color. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of that color, so I got, I got the blue one. Um, but yeah, let's get this thing opened up and see what is inside. So here we have the Volcano EPX Pro. Now, impressions about the body, I absolutely love it. Um, there's very few points about, about it that I kind of am concerned about or dislike. Um, I love the new, like, more aggressive muscle car looking front end of it. It looks very aggressive, very, very cool. Kind of looks like a Charger or a Camaro or something. Looks very cool. I, I, I love the look of it. Um, they did the stripes again, like they did on the Volcano 16. But this time, instead of being solid lines, they did kind of like brush strokes. So even though it's not completely centered, they can kind of get away with it because it, it's not supposed to be symmetrical anyway. On the Volcano 16, it wasn't, it didn't line up at all. It was kind of tragic. So that looks pretty good. I would have liked the stripes to be white. I thought I think that would look pretty cool, but the black also looks pretty cool as well. Um, I don't like how there's a white background on this Volcano logo. It kind of look, makes it look crap and cheap, uh, but it's a very, very, very minor thing. Um, but overall, the truck looks very cool. Very nice, like aggressive, muscular lines to this truck body. Um, and a really nice like metallic blue paint scheme. Um, the copper one will also be kind of a metallic paint um, uh, paint scheme there. So that's also pretty cool. Um, th this body also has these roof rails, which add like a scale element of like being a kind of like utility rails on like a truck or something. Um, as well as being kind of the roof sliders. So that adds both a uh, uh, cosmetic and like a functional upgrade to this, to this uh, truck. And kind of to go along with it is the rear spoiler, which looks very subtle and looks very, very nice. I love the look of that. The little spoiler with the square the truck bed, I think looks fantastic. Um, it also adds kind of a protection for the rear of the body. I wish they had something in the front, especially since the front bumper is smaller than the rear bumper on this truck, which I always thought was kind of funny. Um, but I don't know. Uh, a little minor thing there again, I guess. The spoiler does have like a red cat and like red cat logo embossed in it, so that's pretty cool as well. And I love how the, the truck bed is uh printed in black, so that looks fantastic as well. 
Um, the wheels are also brand new. They look much better than the original wheels. Um, they are really thin spoke though, and um, there isn't that much reinforcement at the rear of the wheels. So I'm kind of concerned about the durability of these wheels, but we'll have to see. But nevertheless, they look they do look fantastic, especially with the new style like Red Cat, like the Kaiju style where they have the Red Cat logo in the barrel. Um, the stickers are not pre-applied out of the box. You have to apply it yourself. And the barrel of the wheel is not as deep out, deep as I would like. So the stickers are kind of difficult to put on um, well. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, but the tires, even though they look the same as my old Volcano, they are significantly, significantly softer. Um, these, I think, will grip decently well, especially for an, RT, uh, for an RTR. These are pretty soft tires. Like I, I actually really like these tires. Uh, they also do have foam and they are vented, as you can hear. Um, the body also comes down much farther to the sides, so it covers up more of the chassis. Uh, and the, the old version kind of sat up a little high and the, 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 the side of the body didn't come down low enough. So it kind of sat up like that and you could see all the electronics and it looked kind of terrible and cheap. So it's really nice that it comes down a little farther so that looks much, much nicer, um, much cleaner as well, more complete. And then on this side, it does have like a battery tray wall so that also kind of adds to the stealthy look to this. But taking off the body clips and also body clips are pretty bent up like that. So you can grip it a little, a little easier. So I love that. But taking the body off, the body is screen printed. It does feel like a PVC uh, kind of, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, I do want this body to last because I like the body. But PVC is not the best for <laughs> durable bodies. So we'll have to see how, what the durability is like for that body. But looking at the chassis, um, pretty standard setup uh, for this style of touring car based buggy, touring car based buggy based like monster truck. Um, very old design. This is from back when they had like the TT01, Tamiya TT01. So this, the design is very similar with the, uh, like the, the flat touring car chassis with the, like the brace on top, um, all that going on. So pretty standard, pretty simple chassis. Some changes they did make for the brushless version. I think the brushless version for the Red Cat always had these light blue parts, which I liked a lot better. So I'm really happy with that. The brushless version also comes with aluminum threaded shocks, all, all eight of them. So that's pretty nice as well. Um, the ESC 60 amp um, can run up to 3S, but if you do run 3S on this truck, it will void your warranty. So uh, kind of play at your own risk kind of thing. The motor is the same thing that they include on their like um, uh, Wendigo and their other like 10 scale brushless stuff. So pretty standard Red Cat electronic fare there. They're hobby wing stuff, so it's pretty reliable and can be programmed. Um, as you kept hearing, the brushless version also does come with full ball bearings and comes with uh, metal spur gear, like steel spur gear. So that should add to the durability and also will make it sound pretty neat. So that's, uh, I don't know, there's something about that clicking that sounds really satisfying to me. Um, the receiver is this, the, this typical FlySky FSGT2 RCR 2CE radio, this thing right here. Really good radio. It is the updated version um, with the, the black print right there. So it just looks a little nicer and cleaner. Love this radio. Really, really, really good radio. I really don't think you need to upgrade it. Um, the only reason I would upgrade it is if you have an existing radio, like a higher end multiple model radio, then you could do it that way. But those are really good radios. I like them. Um, the brushless version seems like it also has lots of adjustment. I think the brush version also had these adjustments actually. Um, so that, I don't think that's, that's super, super new. But yeah, all, all these aluminum parts, that, that was the, always the uh, amazing thing about this truck. You get all these like aluminum parts and stuff and the cost is significantly lower than, than all, basically all of its competition. The closest thing to this is obviously the TTO2, which do doesn't have a monster truck version and that's obviously all plastic. And then the Phaser Mark II Madvan uh, VE, if you get the brushless version. Um, and that one comes with a, a, a aluminum center drive shaft but everything else on that is also plastic. So 
it's really cool that you get all these metal parts and adjustable turnbuckles and all that kind of stuff on this metal dog bones so really really cool um one of the main reasons i really love this truck some of the weak points of, of, of the previous versions of this truck were one the suspension travel and two the uh steering bell crank here with the servo saver kind of deal right right there um that tends to wear out and kind of gets loose and then your car won't steer they do make an aluminum upgrade part for that so Maybe in the future I will I will do that. I kind of want to see how long this stock one lasts to see if it lasts any longer than my previous ones. Um, but uh, I'd rather not upgrade stuff until I break them. Uh, the servo, uh, I can guarantee it's going to be slow. It sounds like it's plastic gear. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I don't have high hopes for the servo, but it, 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 it is what it is. And the truck is pretty cheap. And this and servos are pretty cheap to replace anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, the suspension travel. So, uh, a big point of the suspension of the Volcano, the monster truck version, was always that it didn't have full range of motion. So when you would compress the suspension, it only can if you can see the bottom of the chassis here, it would stop around here, and kind of like start binding and like stop right here, which. The reason that it was causing that issue <clears throat> issue was because the dog bones were bottoming out in their cups and preventing the suspension from moving any further. So what that meant was if you had, especially on the brushless version, uh, you're landing huge jumps or like um, just trying to make the suspension cycle all the way, it'll end up bending or break, either breaking your hub carriers or bending your drive shafts, uh, breaking your drive cups, just all sorts of gymnastics going on there so uh, that I think is what um, kind of scared a lot of people away from the brushless version especially of this truck uh, but from this I can immediately feel you can hear it too it does have full range of motion it is slapping the chassis all the way so that is I think a very significant uh, improvement uh, on the suspension setup, I will have to go and like check my old video where I mentioned the uh, placement of the um, turnbuckles to 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 get 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 that full range of motions to see if it, if they actually made those adjustments on this new one. Um, I'll talk about that when I bring this truck back out uh, in a different video. But um, from what I can feel, suspension significantly improved. You can actually bottom out all the way. Uh, without having to adjust stuff right out of the box. So that's really, really, really nice to see. And the shocks also feel very nicely uh, tuned. They're stiff enough where it's not gonna roll over immediately, but they're plush, quite plush as well, especially having eight shocks. The eight shocks is not really a performance benefit, it's more of a like a bling, like like box art impression, like trying to look impressive on the box kind of thing. Um, but they do look like they work pretty well. Um, it does have progressive rate springs on it. Um, they don't they don't quite work all the way because these progressive side doesn't bottom out all the way. Um, but it feels pretty good nevertheless. Um, and I think that it is that that is a significant improvement. And hopefully that will also add to the durability of the whole drivetrain in general. The one thing that I kind of have a concern with is I noticed out of the box, my center drive shaft, which is aluminum, is slight. It's not perfectly true. It's not perfectly straight. Um, so it's ever so slightly bent. So when it spins really fast, um, kind of like wobbles around, which I think might uh, end up being a problem. So I might have to call call up Red Cat and kind of uh, try to see if I can get a new drive shaft for that. But other than that. Um, overall really happy with the changes that they've made. Um, kind of strange that they did not use standard wheel nuts though. You can see it's just a threaded lock nut. So that's still kind of cheap and weird that they won't do that. But especially with all the other nice changes that they made to the truck. But again, kind of minor issue. Those are really cheap to replace and they, they work fine. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be a huge, huge, huge issue. But yeah. Um, Pretty happy with all the changes. All the changes, basically, that I wished, I was hoping they would have made to the truck. They did make, um, especially the suspension here. Very, very happy about that. Um, the bell crank steering here, like servo saver thing, feels a little bit harder, so maybe won't wear out as fast and won't be as gummy. 
Um, I, I won't know fully until I drive it. But yeah, just really happy to have one of these back in the, back in the stables. Uh, the LiPo battery in here, not included. Um, that is my LiPo battery that I put in here so I could run it later. But while, while we're talking about it real quick, it does include a box for the LiPo battery to sit in. So that's also pretty nice. So overall, very, very happy with the changes they've made. I love the look of the truck. I'm very, very excited to drive it. I've never actually driven this brushless version. I have driven trucks with this um, ESC motor combo before, and it's a really fast system. So I'm kind of excited and also kind of nervous to see how well this thing will do with that much power. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And you will definitely see this thing on my channel. Uh, maybe it won't, maybe it'll hopefully be still in one piece, but um, I'm gonna have lots of fun with this thing. And I uh, was just really excited to play with it. So that is it for now. Uh, kind of a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.